Dating during the pandemic has been extremely difficult. Just ask my wife. For millions of singles isolated at home, finding love meant relying exclusively on an industry worth more than $4 billion a year in the US alone internet dating apps. Now, a year ago, I wrote that companies were responding by promoting video calling, telephone dates, even synchronized Netflix watch-alongs. I wanted to find out how that response has evolved. The most immediate change you can see today is that dating apps are beginning to promote their members based on whether or not they've been vaccinated. Tinder, the largest of its kind in the US, is adding digital stickers to member profiles that say, I'm vaccinated or vaccines save lives, and giving free access to premium content to help them stand out amongst potential matches. OkCupid is doing similar. Since May 24th, it optionally promotes a user's vaccine status on their profiles and asks whether it's important to them that their potential matches have been vaccinated as well. It'll take things a step further from June, it said, by letting singles filter potential matches based on whether they've had the shot or not. It'll also ask which first a person is most nervous about after the pandemic, a date, a kiss, a sleepover, or meeting friends and family. The company said mentions in user profiles of a vaccination status had risen about 1,400% since January. That's about a month after shots became available in countries such as the US and the UK. And that it was confident people wanted to return to dating in person, with only 7% of its users explicitly saying they weren't confident doing so. As soon as worldwide lockdowns began last year, video calling quickly became the default way for many singletons to interact, actively promoted by dating apps whether or not their businesses directly offered a way for them to do so on their platforms. Companies quickly added video features to their products if they didn't already exist though, such as Plenty of Fish, which baked in live streaming with speed dating features last March, and Tinder, which rolled out private video calling in October. In some cases, there won't be a choice of whether to date online or off, with countries re-entering or relaxing lockdowns based on infection rates. So many apps are setting themselves up for long-term support of hybrid online-offline dating. In February this year, Match Group, which owns Hinge, Match, OkCupid, Plenty of Fish, among others, said it had agreed to acquire video technology company HyperConnect for a cool $1.7 billion. That's not the kind of change you throw down just to ride out a temporary speed bump. But another pandemic trend all of these companies will need to observe is quite simply that a lot of people have become quite comfortable being single on their own at home. Adult video website Pornhub said in the summer, daily visits to its pages were up as much as 25% compared to an average pre-pandemic month. And that's far from the most surprising trend the pandemic spurred into motion, according to Alex Fox, a writer and broadcaster who specializes in covering intimate topics. Sales of internet connected and app enabled toys uh, like um, vibrators that can be remotely controlled over a distance or teledildonic toys where they're sold in a pair and the motion of one is replicated by the other. So you can essentially have a synced up sexual experience, even if they're on two different continents. Those sales rose, I think, in large part due to couples still trying to have a shared sexual experience, even if they couldn't be together in the same home. Um, but then a lot of people came and spoke to me with concerns about security, particularly people who hadn't used that type of toy before. That it, a lot of them, you know, they they were playing sometimes with strangers, either for their own kicks or for cash, uh, or they were. This was their first foray into using an internet-enabled sex toy with a with a long-term partner. Um, and Mozilla. Uh, Every year since 2019, they've produced this buyer's guide that um, analyzes not only internet connected sex toys, but also dating apps and looks at those factors uh, to see how safe things are. Um, they found that in the majority, there were still real major security concerns about some of these toys. Include a link to that Mozilla report in the comments below this video. No matter where you look then, the business of dating apps has been resilient during the pandemic. And in fact, Match's share price gained more than 35% since July, and rival Bumble said in May its quarterly sales had risen 43% from the same period a year earlier. It's not bad for a company that only held its $2 billion IPO in February. Thanks to my wife Kate for not threatening divorce while I browsed a lot of dating apps to research this video. And for more content like it, 
keep following Quick Take across your favourite socials. For Quick Take in London, I'm Nate Langson.